so you are welcome to the global watch today it's Wednesday the 5th of October the break of dawn Jerusalem time and it's always a joy to pray together as living stones kings and priests from different parts of the world exercising our priestly mandate to be a house of prayer for all nations a house not built by by rocks and stones but by living stones bought by the precious blood of Jesus and this morning here will be led by the Africa watch it is also an, an appointed day one of the feasts of the Lord Yom Kippur in English the day of atonement and we thank God that we can mark it together as one new man Jews and Gentiles in Christ Jesus as we begin I'll ask our brother Frederick to lead us in an opening prayer Father, we thank you that we are together before you. We thank you that you brought us together from different nations. That you are a Lord for giving sins. That you are a Lord seeking the lost. We thank you for that and we ask you to be with us in this hour, to bless us, to reveal yourself to us. And to let this be a special time with you today, Father. We thank you for that. Amen. 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 Thank you, Frederick. Well, uh, it is Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. And in the Old Testament, it was the most holy day in the Jewish year. And that's when the high priest would enter the Holy of Holies with the blood of the Lamb to make atonement for the sin of himself, but also the entire nation of Israel and the book of Hebrews tells us Jesus took his own blood to the Holy of Holies in heaven and made atonement for our sins once and for all in first John chapter 2 from verse 1 to 3 if somebody can read for us first John chapter 2 from verse 1 to 3 <laughs> Delaying is your Bible oh, nearby? I got it now. Uh -huh. Okay. First John 2 1 through 3. Yes, thank My you. Children. It's okay to read? Yeah. Yes, please. My children I'm writing you these things so that you won't sin. But if anyone does sin, we have Yeshua the Messiah, the Zadik, like this one, who pleads our cause with the Father. Also, he is the Kapara for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for those of the whole world. And three, the way we can be sure we know him is if we are obeying his commands. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So, yes, he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And not only for ours, I believe John was talking to fellow Jews at this point, 
but it then says, but all or for, for saints who are believers, but also for the sins of the whole world. So we will worship the Lord in a song entitled, Nothing But the Blood of Jesus, and I'll share it for us. Amen. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I'd invite two people to pray, just to appreciate the Lord for the precious blood of Jesus. Dear Lord, we just say thank you that those words are so simple. It's such a simple song, and yet it actually expresses everything that we need to know, that it is only by your blood that we have forgiveness of sin. And Lord, we are so thankful that you, when you died on the cross, that the, the veil in the temple was rent from top to bottom so that we don't have to wait for one day of of a, of a year to be able to go in and and ask for forgiveness of sins but lord your blood has done it all and we just say thank you that at any time we can come and repent for things we've done wrong and we know that the blood covers all our sins not only covers them but washes them right away so lord we just say thank you thank you for what you did on the cross of calvary that it is your blood and your blood only. In Jesus' name, amen. And Lord, I agree. And I want to say thank you that you went to your father and you poured your precious blood on the mercy seat of heaven. And it speaks propitiation for every one of us today. Your precious blood speaks mercy, mercy, the price has been paid. And Lord, many of us have probably seen the pictures of all your Jewish people who are at the Western Wall crying out to you, even now. And all of us across the nations, Lord, I want to thank you that your promise is that you would make our skin sins that are as scarlet whiter than the snow and that in the early days of the temple when the priest would take the the goat sacrifice the blood into the holy of holies and pour the blood on the mercy seat they would know outside that you had received this sacrifice of this blood of an animal when the red tassels turned white and that lord you gave signs and wonders of purity and cleanliness and we thank you jesus that you have been that sacrificial lamb and now we are as your bride as your ecclesia we ask today in this hour as we present ourselves before you you would cleanse purge purify us through your precious blood, as you speak, through Luke in uh, the end of his gospel, that your precious blood was shed for the remission and the forgiveness of sins. We want to be your pure bride, Lord, dressed in white. We need to make ourselves ready. And would you show us anything that is impure still in our hearts, any bitterness, unforgiveness, pride, Lord, anything that would be displeasing to you. And we particularly are praying today for the continent of Africa. And we speak for the bridal church to arise, to make herself ready, dressed in white, in the purity of your garments of righteousness, of your garments of tenderness and forgiveness and goodness and purity. And we bless our brethren in Africa. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you so much. Um, 
Father, Father, I want to thank you so much, Lord, that you opened the gate, that we can all run back to the Father, Lord. I see us all running to the Father. Father, thank you that it's exceedingly abundantly above all joy, Lord. It's you, joy, Father, when your children come back running home to you, Father, sitting on your lap and being really um, one with you again. And thank you, Lord, that you uh, you are the sacrifice you gave yourself for us to run back home to the Father, that you are the, the goal, Lord, for, for us all, Lord, being together as one in you and Christ and the Father. Thank you for the celebration, Father, that this will be a day of celebration, that that your people, Israel, will, will get to know you, that you will remove this veil that's on, on their eyes, Lord, to see you lifted high, to see you glorified as their Savior, as their Redeemer. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Joe and Elena and Yuta. Thank God for that precious blood. And today is Yom Kippur. Some of you, of course, I'm sure as watchmen, you know its significance, but we'll just do a very brief recap. In Leviticus chapter 23, God gave the nation of Israel instructions on how to keep his appointed times. And he told Moses, these are my appointed times time so for a long time the church came to call them the feasts of Israel or the Jewish feasts but they are actually the Lord's feasts and they are the Lord's feasts because in them he marked certain stages for the, his redemption plan for mankind the first feast he mentioned was the Shabbat, which is a weekly appointment every six days to work and the seventh day, day of Sabbath rest. And then he mentions annual feasts, which would happen once a year, the first being the Passover, in which we remember the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then the Feast of Unleavened Bread, bread without yeast had to be eaten for seven days which was symbolic of Yeshua who is the the body with which had no sin he had to be buried the day after Passover and then the feast of first fruits which speaks of the resurrection of our Lord and 50 days later would be Shavuot or the Feast of Pentecost and that's when the Holy Spirit filled the believers in the upper room and in the seventh month the first day of the seventh month would be the Feast of Trumpets or Rosh Hashanah which we marked last week and then ten days later would be the Day of Atonement or when the high priest would take the blood of sacrifice, the blood of the Lamb, and once in a year he would enter the Holy of Holies. This instruction came through the events in Leviticus 16. We see that two sons of Aaron offered strained fire at the altar, and they were struck dead. And then God gave Aaron instructions through Moses Leviticus 16 verse 3 this is how Aaron is to enter the most holy place he must first bring a young bull for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering is to put on the sacred linen tunic with linen undergarments next to his body so we see the color white is, is a theme color on this day. 
we know the high priest had very colorful robes and garments but on this day once in a year he had to appear before the Lord only in white the Bible goes on to say he's to tie the linen sash around him and put on the linen turban these are sacred garments so he must bathe himself with water before he puts them on from the Israelite community verse 5 from the Israel community he is to take two male goats for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering so you can read the whole of Leviticus 16 it goes a lot in detail but you see all those were shadows of Messiah now let us see what Hebrews says to decode the shadows Hebrews 9 verse 24 to 28 I'll ask somebody to read for us Hebrews 9 verse 24 to 28 Hebrews 9 verses 24 to 28 and also Hebrews 10 verse 10 up to 14 Hebrews 9 verse 24 to 28 and Hebrews 10 from verse 10 to 14 Yeah, I can, uh, I can carry on. Yes, and I can read. Uh, Hebrews 9, 24 to 28. Sorry. Um, 24. For Christ did not enter holy places made with hands, which are patterned after the true one, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us nor did he enter to offer himself often as the high priest enters the most holy place every year with blood that is not his own. For then he would have had to suffer repeatedly since the world was created, but now he has appeared once at the end of the ages to put away sin by sacrificing himself. As it is appointed for man to die once, but after this comes the judgment. So Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many and he will appear a second time not to bear the sin but to save those who eagerly wait for him amen thank you so much angelica uh, that was was that up to verse 28 28 yep Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, let's have this next reading. Hebrews 10 from verse 10 to 14. I can read. We have been made holy by God's will through the offering of Jesus. Jesus Christ's body once for all. Every priest stands every day serving and offering the same sacrifices over and over. Sacrifices that can never take away sins. But when the priests offered one sacrifice for sins for all time, he sat down at the right side of God. Since then, he is waiting until his enemies are made into a footstool for his feet. Because... He perfected the people who are being made holy with one offering for all time. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Doris. Yes, he made, sanctified the people with one offering for all time. So our focus today is going to be obedience leading to transformation. 
as the people for whom the Lord has made the perfect sacrifice, our call now is to live and walk in obedience to Him. Romans chapter 12 from verse 1 to 2 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I want to bring your attention to the word therefore in verse 1. I beseech you therefore. And we've learned that if you find a therefore in the Bible, you need to find the reason why it is there. Therefore, this therefore comes because in chapter 11 there are things Paul was talking to the Romans from verse 25, 11 from verse 25, which then leads us to chapter 12. So we are going to read. Romans 11 verse 25 up to 36. Okay, uh, is somebody else there to read for us? Romans 11 from 25 to 36. I can do that. Okay. Uh, for I do not desire, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should, uh, should be wise in your own opinion, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. And so all Israel will be saved, as it is written, the deliverer will come out of Zion and he will turn away ungodliness from Jacob for this is my covenant with them when I take away their sin concerning the gospel they are enemies for your sake but concerning the election they are beloved for the sake of the fathers for the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable for as you will as you once disobeyed, um, were disobedient to God, yet have now obtained mercy through their disobedience. Even so, uh, these, um, sorry, these also have now been disobedient. E even so, they also have now been disobedient that through the mercy shown you, they also may obtain mercy. For God has committed them all to disobedience, that he might have mercy on all. O oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who has known the mind of the Lord, or who has become his um, counsellor? Or who has first given to him, and it shall be repaid to him. For of him and through for of him and through him and to him are all things, to whom he be glory forever. Amen. 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 And so after that, that is when we come to chapter twelve when Paul says, I beseech you, therefore. So therefore is because there is a mystery that Paul doesn't want us as the body of Christ to be <coughs> ignorant of. 
that Israel experienced hardening so that the nations would get the opportunity to come into the family of God. And now that we have come into this family, we have to walk a life of a, li a surrendered life offered as a living sacrifice. That's when we shall reach our fullness. And then, once the full number and the fullness of the Gentiles come in, that is when then he will reveal himself to Israel. And that's when all Israel will be saved. And all the, the other nations as well, through, through the remnant. So, brethren, that is the calling to obedience that leads to transformation. For now, a larger part of Israel is still blinded to this revelation of Yeshua as the Messiah. Now, we who have come to this understanding need to live our lives surrendered to him as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to God. The same way he lived as the atoning sacrifice, we need to live in obedience to him. One of the thin colors in this season in Israel is the color white, which was the color of linen. And Revelation, Revelation 3, in his messages to the church in... Okay, this is Revelation chapter 3. Yeshua sent messages to different churches. To the church in Sardis, he says, These are the words of him who holds the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your deeds. You have a reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Wake up. Strengthen what remains and is about to die. For I have found your deeds unfinished in the sight of my God. Remember, therefore, what you have received and heard. Hold it fast and repent. But if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief. And you will not know at what time I will come to you. Remember, the Feast of Trumpets is warning us to awake for the Lord returns at a time we do not know. Verse 4, Yet you have people in Sardis who have not soiled their clothes. They will walk with me dressed in white, for they are worthy. The one who is victorious will, like them, be dressed in white. I will never blot out the name of that person from the book of life, but will acknowledge that name before my father and his angels. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And interestingly, on the Day of Atonement, the greeting in Israel is, May your name be found in the book. And Yeshua says to those who are victorious, they'll be dressed in white. I will never blot out the name of that person from the book of life. Amen. So I'd like us to pray into this for the ecclesia, for the watchmen family. Uh, that the Lord will continue helping us walk in these white garments, walking in obedience to his word. And then towards the end, I'll also share prayer request for Africa concerning her relationship with Israel. Amen. Let's first pray into this.
Amen. So, anyone? Uh, Lord, we thank you for this time when we remember the Day of Atonement. We remember how the High Priest would go into the Holy of Holies. And Lord, today we remember and celebrate Yeshua, our great High Priest, who went to the Holy of Holies in heaven once and for all, making atonement for all the sin of his people and all the sin of the world. Thank you, Lord. In Yeshua's name, amen. Mm. Anyone can also pray. I just, when you're praying, I just remembered all the sins put on the scapegoat, weren't they? And sent out into the desert. willing to become that scapegoat for us and in this word to Sardis where we're doing religious things where we think what we're doing is just fine but you say actually death has come in through the door where you said even to the church of, of um, Galatia who has bewitched you oh foolish Galatians how come you've walked away so far from what you started in the spirit and where we've turned to legalism and i pray for my jewish brethren lord where they're still caught up in that ministry of death of legalism of self-righteousness of all that you came to overturn lord jesus we thank you for that beautiful passage from romans that you are merciful you will have mercy on those who will have mercy. And that Heavenly Father, you would speak to each one of us and we're praying for the bride, the remnant you're gathering together in the continent of Africa, Lord, as well as Israel. And I just want to thank you, Jesus, that you've, you've been that dead lamb on the cross for me and all of us, you've been that scapegoat. And before you died, you said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And then you declared to Satan, it is finished. It is finished. And I just felt to just declare this Lord Jesus Christ, your full finished works of what you accomplished that all of that curse that came in through Adam and Eve's fall coming into agreement with the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that Jesus you would deliver us from that which is death and cause us out of our willingness to put to death our sinful nature those things that you show us that are displeasing to you those attitudes and judgments and criticisms and hatreds and angers, Lord, that all bring death, that Jesus, you would cause us to arise as your resurrected bride, as you did rise in the resurrection. And you say, behold, I am alive, Lord Jesus. I am alive and I hold the keys of hell and death. I want to proclaim you are the risen, resurrected, completely victorious, majestic, holy God, the King of Israel, the King of all of our hearts, and that by your grace you'd bring us to this place our brother's speaking about, of complete submission to your word, by your Holy Spirit, not to legalism, and that, Lord, you would clothe us with your garments of white, ready for the wedding feast. And Lord, in the, in the ancient Hebrew way of doing weddings, when the king was getting married, he would send out garments to all of those who were invited to the wedding feast. And we thank you, Father, you would release to us new mantles, new garments, 
that we would be dressed in white, in the garments of humility, the garments of purity, the garments of rejoicing and thanksgiving and gratitude, the garments of your shalom, peace and righteousness that, and justice that are the foundations of your throne. We want to praise and thank you for this transformation and renewing of our mind as we seek this all out in your word. And you even spoke to your people, Israel, at the beginning of Isaiah, that you said, come reason with me. Let's come and talk this out together. I pray for all of us as I pray for our beloved brethren in Africa. This is a time of reasoning, even on this precious day. Anything that's still not settled and sorted with you, Lord. You say you would turn our skins, sins that are a scarlet, whiter than the snow. We call forth your life, your bride fully alive, fully in love with you, fully obedient and yielded because her old man has been crucified with Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Father, and you, I thank you that you say you don't have to put it on us. So, Father, I ask for all of us, I ask us especially today for Africa and Israel. Father, I ask that you um, um, give us the ability to walk in true sonship, that the government of our life, Jesus, is on your shoulder, that we are walking in your sight and um, that we walk in true humility that we humble ourselves um, under your mighty hand, Father, that we only receive from you, that we know we can do nothing out of ourselves, that we need you, we are absolutely depending on you, and it's a pleasure, uh, Lord, to walk in your sight, to be holy, blameless, unreprovable for, for um, because, only because of what you did for us, and in your love, and in your faithfulness we walk. I thank you, Lord, that, um, that we walk in true holiness before you, Lord, that our heart desire is to be obedient, to walk in holiness, to walk in your light, to walk in your love, because, Father, you loved us first and you have given um, your son to us and you say, how can I not with him give you all things? Father, I thank you for this fullness the fullness, the completeness, and perfection in Christ Jesus in us to arise what you start in and to us, Lord, you are finishing, Lord, that we come to the full measure of Christ in us so that the Jews will become uh, to jealousy, seeing us, Father, that we shine as stars, Father, and that we walk in your joy, the joy that is set before us, Lord. I thank you and I praise you for your perfect work in us. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Father, thank you that you have given us once again a day of repentance, Lord. I thank you so much that you want us to live in a repentant lifestyle until you come back. And Father, thank you so much that um, yeah, you are such a merciful God for all these things you have given us. So help us that all things are uh, set right in us in our families lord jesus thank you father that you will bring forth the fullness of your church the fullness of your bride the fullness of uh, its its understanding of you lord jesus and i want to ask you father that you will wake up the churches lord jesus i want to ask you father that uh, we come to the fullness of you in Christ Jesus, as you say, Christ in us and we in you. And so, Father, I pray that uh, this fruit, this precious fruit goes before you, before you come back in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 also <clears throat> like us to pray uh, for the salvation of Israel. We thank God for 
the remnant in the land, uh, those mm -hmm. that are coming to know him within the land, even in the nation, in the diaspora, more, more Jews are coming to know, to the saving knowledge of their Messiah. We pray for that more will increase. Amen. The second thing would like us to pray for Africa. <clears throat> In 1973 was the Yom Kippur War. That is when a coalition of Arab states led by Egypt and Syria attacked Israel on Yom Kippur, the most solemn day in Israel. And uh, as, in, in, as a result, there were influential nations at the Organization of African Unity, like Libya and Egypt, that made African states break diplomatic relations with Israel since 1973. Besides Malawi, South Africa at that time, Swaziland and Lesotho. Uh, fi this finally resumed relations with the Jewish state during the 80s and 90s. The resumption of diplomatic ties has been gradual as peace efforts were, niche in were being talked about. And we thank God who is merciful that right now Israel enjoys diplomatic relations with more than 40 sub-Saharan African states. We also have two African states, part of the Abrahamic, uh, the Abrahamic... Accords. Accord, yes, thank you. Uh, that's Sudan and Morocco. So we see there's been a, a gradual uh, restoration. I would like us to pray that these relations will grow stronger. How? With Israel maintaining its position at the, at the Africa Union, uh, some time back there was some opposition to this, uh, Israel being an observer member. We pray this will be maintained. And secondly, that we shall see African governments move their embassies to Jerusalem. Currently, we don't have any African nation with an embassy in Jerusalem. Those that have them will have them in Tel Aviv. But prophetically speaking, we see the fullness of the alignment is with Jerusalem, which is the city of the great king. So I would like to pray into that, that regard as well. Amen. So I'll invite uh, people to pray. Uh, Brother Yiv, Pastor Yiv, you can pray into that. And anyone else, please feel free. Jennifer, uh, and uh, okay, others, any others who have not yet prayed, please pray. Father, we thank you this morning um, for the privilege of uh, praying for Israel. We thank you that you are the one who uh, chose Israel, you are the one who selected it uh, among the nations. We thank you for um, the current status where they are, Lord. We praying, indeed, the Lord, that uh, we may have mercy on them, we may have mercy on the on uh, Israel. We know that today we have a lot of people who are not believing in the Messiah in Israel. We pray, Lord, just for their salvation. We commit them to you, Lord. We praying that uh, you, uh, Lord, will uh, have mercy upon them, that you will uh, heal them, that you will uh, remove the heart of stones and uh, put in the heart of flesh so that Father God, they will be able to trust and hope in you 
and believe in the Messiah that you sent. Oh Lord, we're praying over uh, every each and every city of uh, Israel, starting by Jerusalem, Tel Aviv, and other cities, Lord, that uh, your power, your strength, your spirit will move uh, among the people there, among the Jews, among the Muslim, among the non-believers in Israel. Lord Jesus, you know that uh, you are able to do this and uh, we continue to trust and hope in your word and what you said that uh, they'll come to, to salvation. Lord, uh, we thank you, Lord, even with the relationships with of our Israel, with other states, with the world. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you may amend, that you may bring peace over Israel as maybe peace between Israel and with the other nations. We pray, Lord Jesus, Lord, for the diplomatic relationship between Israel and other states that uh, they may be able to recognize uh, Jerusalem. Father, we are praying that uh, your miracles will be done into that uh, state. Father God, we continue to believe uh, for the relationship with the Africa and the African Union. Uh, Lord Jesus, Lord, we believe that uh, um, you are mending the relationships and that you are doing miracles, Lord. And we believe that you are a miracle worker and that you are going to do miracles even in the future. Father, we thank you and believe in you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Yith. Um, others, uh, feel free to pray as you feel on your heart. What I want to pray specifically for um, African countries like Cameroon, that they understand um, how important it is the alignment on a government level with Israel, Lord Jesus. And I pray, Father, that you will grant them understanding, that you will grant not only Cameroon, but all African countries, wise political advisors to the current government so that they have an understanding of your end time purposes, Lord Jesus. I pray, Father, that they understand how important it is to move the embassies to, to Jerusalem, Lord Jesus. I pray, Father, that the African countries can align with Israel, that they can align with Jerusalem. And Father, we all long for our nations, that they are sheep nations, Lord. And we just ask, Lord, that you will give the current politicians in, in the countries, in the specific countries, Lord Jesus, the longing to, to be at peace with you and that you are the true peacemaker, that you are the true king of peace. And Lord, I pray that you will grant to each country in Africa this um, wise leadership in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Could I pray? Um, yes, Delaine. Oh, Father God, in these last days, Father God, as we pray for that you would bring the uh, fullness of, the, of Africa, Lord, into um, closer to you, Lord God, that you would bring the governments, Lord, uh, Lord God, we pray for an outpouring of your spirit, Lord, in all the countries over Africa, Lord, that they would that the leadership would turn to you, Lord God, in your justice and righteousness, Lord, and in your love for Israel, Lord God. And we pray, Lord, that Israel will stay in the African Union, Lord, as, as an observer member, Lord God. We, 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 we lift that up to you, Lord God, as you intercede, Yeshua, for us. We pray you would intercede for Africa, Lord, and the embassies would go to Jerusalem, oh Lord God, in these last days to move, Lord, to keep Africa aligned with your heart, Lord God, and and uh, Libya and Egypt too, Lord God. To we're asking for restoration in these last days for your latter day reign, Lord. Your double blessings, Father God, as you, you say in your word. In your watchmen are praying, Lord, for blessings on Africa and strong in your word and strong in the spirit in these last days, the Lord to be strong with Israel, Lord. And even with these African, I, I mean, with the uh, Abrahamic Accords, Father God, I, I, they, they still have the two-state, that they even divide 
Jerusalem, Lord. And so we ask your grace in this, Lord, not just for Africa, but the whole the whole world to understand, Father God, that not to divide your land, Lord. We ask your grace in this too. We don't know how to fix these things, but we, we're looking to you. In Yeshua's name, amen. 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 And may I very briefly just ask the Father's forgiveness. Father, for the African nations, your people who have got an anti-Semitic spirit, I ask on this day of atonement, for deliverance from this anti-Semitic evil spirit, whether it's in the churches, in the governments, the leaderships, Lord, people don't even understand why they feel so strongly against Israel. Lord, we ask you lift the veil of this deception in every lying. And I want to ask for my Israel father, for the president minister of Israel, for forgiveness for standing up and dividing your covenant land. You say, woe betide in Joel 3, 2. Those who divide my land. Father God, we cry out to you for apostate Israel who've come into agreement and made laws and made decrees and pronouncements in your United Nations. I ask for my nation of Australia and so many others around the world who've all come into agreement with this two-state solution that is an abomination in your sight. And so, Father, we cry out to you today to pour out your Holy Spirit of truth, such a hunger for truth, such a hunger for your righteousness, and such a revelation, Lord, of the Bible that says that right in the beginning of Genesis, where Eden was, in between the rivers where you have established Israel, your land of covenant, and that you would open the eyes of the brethren in Africa to see, to have revelation of the knowledge of you as Messiah, as the son of the living God, but the king of the Jews and the holy God of Israel, the lion of the tribe of Judah, and they realize they're messing with you and this whole Psalm 2 agenda, Lord, that many, many would come to this revelation. And we ask for these nations, Lord, and they would come, their leaders, and bow before you as the king of kings and kiss your hand in full allegiance as the king of Israel. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Yes, Lord, and I'd just like to lift up uh, Edward as he is actually in the land of Israel at this time. I just pray, Lord Jesus, that he will be such an example of the new covenant. And Lord, that uh, as he wa walks and, and uh, uh, travels around the, the land of Israel, Lord, that you will give him even more insights into the wonderful experience that we can have of being in the land and i pray for every jewish person he comes in contact with that lord his light will shine and they will uh, suddenly realize that there is something more than what they have experienced in the past i pray for that in jesus name amen 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 father and i thank you when he and the team is there father that you build bridges in the in the um spiritual but also in the physical that they meet people father that they connect father thank you for open heaven for revelations for wisdom father that you bless them mightily that your hand is upon them i, I pray for encounters i pray for um assignments appointments father that you uh, you are instinating father that they are alert that they have eyes to see ears to hear and the heart really to to walk with you the land in jesus mighty name i pray amen amen and father i want to pray also that you will give this team directions as you say in your word direction comes out of Zion. and so i pray for the african team on the side right now that you will grant them these new directions you will impart in their own countries lord jesus and father thank you that there will become forth a mighty fruit of rejoicing in the lord 
and and uh, really dancing around the bridegroom lord i thank you so much and please bless the team in jesus name amen amen amen, amen. thank you all for this hour we give thanks to god and i pray the lord's blessing upon each one of you may his may he cause his face to shine upon you and his countenance be upon you and may he grant you his peace and shalom in yeshua's name amen amen so we can say greetings to one another Yes, bless you all. Hello. 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 Have a wonderful time in Jerusalem, the city Hello. of the great city. Bye. Blessings. Bye. 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 Bye.